After an exhaustive interview process, I am proud to announce that Mr. James Hurst was offered the opportunity to lead the Parks and Recreation Department and has accepted the position. That's Palm Coast City Manager Denise Bevan announcing the leadership change. Bevan took the opportunity to thank his predecessor. The Parks and Recreation team is treasured by our residents, businesses, and visitors and has been successfully led by Ms. Lauren Johnston for a long time. Lauren, thank you for being at the ready as always. Hurst also thanked her. If it wasn't for her, uh, we wouldn't be where we are today. So thank you so much, Lauren. Um, I do have some big shoes to fill. So, uh, <laughs> but no, thank you. And I'm excited to lead our fantastic staff, uh, our Park Trail Rec staff into the future. Hearst joined the city of Palm Coast in June of 2014 as an aquatic supervisor and has risen through the ranks. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota US1 St. Augustine, here to wow you. A proposed visitor experience center in Flagler County is moving forward. The Friends of A1A Scenic and Historic Coastal Byway Organization has its sights set on $3.6 million in federal grant money that could boost the opportunity of a visitor experience center becoming a reality in Flagler County. The County Commission, which already committed tourism dollars to support the proposed Visitor Experience Center to the tune of $1.1 million, voted recently to support the Friends of A1A's application. Danielle Anderson, Executive Director of the Friends of A1A. One's a $75,000 marketing grant, which is going to revamp and revise our all of our materials. It's all American Road now. And then the second grant will be for the Visitor Experience Center. A proposed Visitor Experience Center has been a vision in the county since November of 2019. Flagler County Tourism Director Amy Lukasik. And this partnership is just one example of the importance of working with these types of organizations that in a lot of ways are in line with our mission and goals. Lukasik says they've worked for a year looking for a funding source. The governor has to give final approval. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Karen Johnson. The Flagler County Commission approves a permit to build a storage facility in Hunter's Ridge. Kimberly Buck is the developer's representative and describes the new facility. This site was changed to allow for 102,000 square feet of industrial use. The new developer looked at multiple options and found that a storage facility, a mini warehouse, indoor conditioned um, facility was the least impactful of industrial uses for this area. Area residents voiced their disapproval of the new facility to the County Planning Commission, and that resulted in additional conditions being added to the permit. Commissioner Andy Dan says it comes down to a property rights issue. It's allowable permitted use for the designation and the owners have accommodated by adding some additional buffers and, and accommodated some lighting issues and whatnot. So I, I think it's been vetted. Commissioner Greg Hansen says it looked like government worked well in this process. We had people complain and we and you fixed it. You fixed it. So uh, yeah, that's the way it's supposed to work. This is the first industrial development in Hunter's Ridge. I'm Rich Petschke. Flagler County has an organization focused on creating a safety net of services to support the community. It's called Flagler Cares, and CEO Carrie Baird says the organization is focusing on three key areas. So we looked at access to behavioral health services, which includes mental health and substance use disorder services, as one of the areas that we want to really focus our work on, build capacity, make sure that people have access to services. The second is economic and social barriers, things like affordable housing, access to quality, affordable child care, access to health insurance coverage. And the third really, I think, is new in our work. The others have been fo uh, areas of focus in the past, but looking at the system infrastructure, quite often people who need help don't know where to go. And that's a very important focus. So really moving that area of work where we can make sure that people are aware of the services we have, they know how to connect to them, there are no barriers to them connecting to those services, and that all of the systems work together instead of silos. So I think I'm really excited about what we're going to do in that area this year. Baird says they use the results from a community health survey to determine the priorities. <laughs> Why would the city let people touch their trucks? Benny Cope is part of the Palm Coast Public Works Department. He said that people 
but especially kids, see their trucks all the time when the crews are out working, so it's only fitting that everybody gets a chance to see them up close. We wanted to showcase kind of the equipment that we use to get the work done. And that was an idea that says, well, the kids always look at these machines going down the road. So we want to give the ability to have the kids not only see, touch, climb in, see the equipment, and ask questions. Cope said it's hoped that it will also get the next generation of public works workers curious so that they'll want to do the jobs in the future. The Flagler Voice is on WNZF on Saturday mornings at 8.30. It's on the Flagler radio app anytime you want to listen. Tomorrow, when you hear what's going to be at the Touch a Truck event this weekend, even the grown-ups could have more fun than the kids. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Rich Carroll.